Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to St Mary's this morning. This week uh, we remember Mary in our, um, in, uh, in our sort of Advent journey that we make. So uh, Mary comes sharply into focus. And welcome to everybody who is watching our service at home. So in our service book, The Lord be with you. And also with you. And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So, Roger, could you just dim the lights for us? All through this Advent season, we've been using the Kyrie prayers as our confession. And we bring the lights each week to light our Advent wreath from our Easter candle, which sits at the heart of us each service at the moment as a reminder of the story of Easter and how God's love shines deeply into our lives and into our humanity. So as we gather this morning remembering Mary's commitment to God's purposes in our world, we light four candles, which is a joke somewhere in a Monty Python series. No, it's the, one, it's the two ones, isn't it? It's not one. And we allow the light to shine into the heart of our community. So we have reflected through Advent <coughs> what it is that dims God's light in our world and in our lives. And as we come to confession this morning, we recognise our own stories and our lives where we fall short of that love and where we dim that light. So let's turn to our act of confession. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you exalted the humble and meek. Give us humble and contrite hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you grew towards birth in the virgin's womb. Be planted also in our hearts and lives. Christ have mercy. Christ. Holy Spirit, you overshadowed Mary that she might become the God-bearer. Fill us with your heavenly gifts. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will. And give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for the fourth Sunday 
of Advent. God our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, the final doxology, the end of this great letter. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? And we find our gospel acclamation on page four of our service book. Alleluia, Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Taken from the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee, called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, hid in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please be seated? Such familiar words, <laughs> and you've known them all your life. Um, Paul's letter to the Romans might be slightly different. I don't know how familiar you are with Paul's writings, but his letter to the Romans, in a sense, is kind of understood as his crowning moment, his, um, his piece of work, often described as his own gospel, although, in a sense, it's slightly different to the gospels as we would understand them. It was written about 57 AD, um, when he was on his third missionary journey. We think that the letter was written from Corinth, and like with everything with Paul and everything in the Bible, you have to be slightly cautious because there are different interpretations. But that's the most traditional view, is that where he, where he wrote this letter. Paul is set to return to Jerusalem. He's going to take funds to the church there, which is struggling. And he writes the letter for the church in Rome, 
um, which um, is a growing community of faith in is and is majoritatively at that time a Gentile community, which was quite rare. The main themes of the letter that Paul writes are about God's salvation for all mankind and also righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. And if you read Paul's letter to the Romans, as with many of his other letters, you'll see there's a real battle going on between the Judaic traditions that many of the church have come from, and Paul himself will tell you that he was the most zealous in those traditions, and this new way that has come through the story of Jesus Christ. And the great triumph of Paul's letter to the Romans for me, and, and people will all have their own different verses, is in chapter 8, and it says, and this is a wonderful truth, and you should dine out on this for the rest of your life, that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It's most, one of the most <clears throat> wonderful truths of the whole Bible. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And it speaks into this season that we are entering into now, although slightly oddly. Um, under the present situation that we have. But it speaks of good news into this season when many will come into our church or would traditionally come into our church. And it says to us, in Jesus we are restored. It's Jesus that transforms the world. That's the great statement that Paul makes. It's not the law which Paul argues against and which many of the Judaic Christians would want us to think. It's not law that changes you, it's Jesus and his life, his ministry, his death and his resurrection which restore your relationship with God. It's in Jesus that we find salvation through the cross. It's not the law that brings salvation, as many of the Judeo Christians would want to believe, it's the cross of Jesus Christ. And in him, Paul will tell you in his letters to the Romans, we are made right with God. We have righteousness with God because of Jesus Christ. And the good news is that faith in him brings all those things in your life. But Paul goes further and makes the point, it's not just for the Jewish people, it's for the whole world. This story is for everybody. And that's the great truth of Paul's letter to, the, to the, uh, the Romans. And his final greeting is a real joyous celebration of all those things. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept um, secret for long ages but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all Gentiles according to to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Paul, massively confident in that belief that through Jesus we are restored to God, through Jesus we have salvation, and through Jesus the message is for everybody. And that's why at Christmas it's such an important message, because the amount of people that come to our churches, and we might go, and we might get miserable as, as, as church people and say, oh, they're only here at Christmas or whatever. It really does not matter. This message, this salvation is for everybody. And that is wonderful news. It's great, isn't it? And Paul makes the point in his letter to the Galatians, which is one of his earliest letters, that this story sets us and that's the most important thing, that we're not under bondage to laws and regulations that we are set free. And I always think one of the ways that you can really assess in your faith whether your faith is moving in, a, in the right direction is, do you feel free? That's such a crucial thing, that, that, that the salvation of the cross and the resurrection should make you feel free in God to live your life. But this good news is dependent on something which is remarkable. And this good news is dependent upon someone, somewhere, who has the courage 
to say yes. And today we celebrate one of the greatest yeses of all humanity. Mary says, here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Now we, we've, we've sat through endless nativity plays. <laughs> we've heard this story so that it is overly familiar to us in our Christian faith. But the courage of Mary to do what she did is staggering. This young girl who makes the proclamation, I'm, I'm a virgin, how can, this, how can this be, in her young years, has the courage to put her hand up and say yes to God in our world. It is breathtaking. And if you ever think about Mary as just being another person or whatever, and I know there's this thing sometimes we can overemphasize Mary, particular traditions within the church, but if you view her as just some kind of ordinary yes, then you are deeply mistaken. Her yes has the transforming power that allows St. Paul to write to the church in Rome with confidence about all the things that happened in the life of Jesus Christ. Her sacrifice, her humility, and her fear, because there would have been fear, are the foundations on which you sit here today. It's remarkable, her yes to God. And it becomes the joy of the whole world. And whatever you feel about Mary, whether you're into the kind of Mariology that comes through Catholicism and all those sorts of things, whatever you feel about her, do not diminish her wonderful yes to God, which is encouraging to all again. And what's remarkable, and I often say this to the children at school, what's remarkable about this, that once again, God does something remarkable through ordinary people. And that, again, is our encouragement. I was saying to the children the other day, we, did, we got all the nativity characters. It's a bit odd because I do it by Zoom. So I'm sat in a room with a laptop and they're all waving to me from their classrooms. But we got all the characters out from the nativity. And I said at the end of it, but what makes this remarkable? Little hand goes up. Yes, he said, they're all human beings. And I said, that, that's the story of the gospel. Ordinary human beings have done remarkable things, and none more so than Mary. So you kind of feel there's something in here for us, isn't there? If Mary has the courage to put her hand up as a young girl and say, okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> it all sounds a bit scary. Don't know where this is gonna head. Okay, I'll give this a go. Isn't it remarkable that we should all be encouraged in our lives, to respond to God and do something remarkable. And as I look, I'm not saying that you haven't, as I look out at you this morning, and I know that you have. I see, I mean, like, like over my left shoulder here, there is evidence of people doing remarkable things. But it really should be our encouragement. And on a normal year, and we're gonna welcome loads of people into our church and all that, I would want to encourage you that um, what we do in our lives as ordinary people of God will have an effect on other people. To be encouraged to be God's people here. Not to, not to fear what God calls us to do, but to actually shine as light into the darkness of our world is a beautiful thing. And to live by that truth that St Paul sets before us, that in Jesus we are set free to live as God's people. And in our preface, which I'm going to use in a moment, it says, hearts filled with wonder and praise. And that's what you've got to do this year, is approach this festival in your masks, socially distanced, doing all the things that are required. You've washed your hands, you've done all that. But don't lose, don't lose that sense of wonder and praise. And if you're coming on Sunday afternoon to sing around the Tree of Hope, 
then we can praise together for the first time in a long time and actually sing together, which would be really nice, wouldn't it? But don't lose that sense of wonder and praise. And I want to tell you a story about yesterday to encourage you. <clears throat> Normally, on Christmas Eve, we would fill this church with 500 people for our Christine Lord. It's probably the worst event of the year to try and organise, but one of the most uplifting events of the year because by the end of it, the craziness, the noise, the pile of oranges out in the road and cocktail sticks everywhere, we feel in some way that we've had our opportunity to shine into the lives of so many people. Now, we couldn't do that this year, so yesterday I took 200, how, as it was 230 Christians, we, Alice and I cut the oranges and did the crosses, and we put kits together. We took 230 Christingle kits to the school. And in, a, in an hour yesterday afternoon, I sat with the children and we made our Christingles. So we gave them an orange, we wrapped it with tape, we stuck the cocktail sticks in, we put marshmallows on, we stuck a, um, a glow stick in the top, we cracked the glow stick, and we, 230 children and me, shone like a light into the world. And I had the opportunity to tell them the importance of this story. And one of the teachers emailed me this morning. She said, even when we'd been out in the playground and had the big photograph and gone back into the classroom, they were still able to tell me about God's love and God's light. Now, I wouldn't have had that opportunity, would I, if it wasn't for COVID. We would have been lost in the mess. Now, I'm not saying that what we do on a Christmas Eve isn't important, but it's also afforded us opportunities to do things which we wouldn't normally do. And if nothing else, this Christmas, I want you to go home encouraged that 230 children in your Church of England primary school yesterday afternoon gathered with me and remembered the importance of this season. And I want you to take that home as encouragement for you and for this church and for all that we do together in this place. You may not feel that you make a difference. You may not feel that you're as important as Mary, but you are. And everything that you do in the name of Jesus Christ is just as important in proclaiming love and light into the world in which we live. So may Mary's story encourage us all again today. Don't just read through these stories and go, well, that's nice. Do you remember when young Kevin played with Joseph, you know, and all that kind of thing? You can do all that, can't you? I remember I played one of the three kings when I was at um, infant school. My ears looked like radar dishes when I look back on the photograph. We've all played parts, we've all done things, we've all been to those nativities, we've all experienced that. But don't diminish what Mary did just as another part of the story. Her yes should encourage our yes. Her humility should encourage our humility. Her fear at what lay ahead should inspire us that in the spirit we can achieve so much more together. And to enter this, this week that will be the celebration of the birth of Christ, knowing that the children in our school also understand the importance of that story of light and love in our world. Amen. And you know what the biggest miracle, I want to tell you the biggest miracle. When we went out to the playground to do the photograph, socially distanced, all that kind of stuff, every Christingle still had their marshmallows on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not one child had been tempted to eat them. I, now, normally, in this service here, it's all gone by, I think, um, the second verse of the way in the manger. But every child, the miracle of Christmas. So let's stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed on page 6. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. 
We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we sit or kneel to pray. So, Lord, into your beautiful world, the world that you created, that you brought into being through the power of your love, into a world that was first called with, let there be light. How often in that world we have dimmed that light And Lord, we call out to you to transform our world and our lives. So Lord, wherever in your world today there is darkness, may your light shine through the lives of your people. Let not, let not our humanity dim that light, but let that light encourage our humanity to be generous, to be compassionate, to be peaceable, and full of love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our nation. It's a really, really difficult time. And people are making really, really difficult and tough decisions. Our desire for this pandemic to be over at times makes us or puts us in difficult positions. We pray for our government, and we pray for those who will make tough decisions. Lord, give them your wisdom. And for your church for this season, Lord, scattered throughout this land, with many different ideas of how to share the good news, to be open for worship, Lord, we do pray for our church. Help us, Lord, to be safe. Help us, Lord, to be open. Help us, Lord, to be proclaiming. But most of all, Lord, help us to say yes to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And so many, Lord, today, our prayer list in this church is so long. So many people are in need of your healing love at this time. And not just those, Lord, who are unwell, but those who feel incredibly isolated. Those who live with such fear they can barely leave their homes. Lord, send your healing power on us all. And help us through this season, Lord, through acts of gentle kindness and love to spread that light into the darkness of so many lives. Lord, in your mercy. And many, Lord, have lost loved ones. And it's been a very difficult time this past year for families and for friends. And so, Lord, as we now begin our journey to the celebration of the birth of your Son, who through his life, his death and his resurrection brought hope to our world. Let that hope shine into the lives of so many people. And may your resurrection reassure them of your eternal purposes for your world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. How would you please stand? In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. With this bread that we bring, with this wine that we bring, bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We're going to use an extended preface at the start of Eucharistic Prayer E this morning. Eucharistic Prayer E, which is on page 11 of our service book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came. In his love, Christ fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth, so that when he comes again, he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. 
on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean.
So let's just bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say the prayer after communion together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of uh, notices before our final blessing. Just a reminder, um, in uh, next week, there's uh, a communion service normally midweek. Then there is um, Christmas Eve, 8 o'clock, and then Christmas morning at 11 o'clock, and then the first Sunday of Christmas at 10.30. So there, um, I know that we've asked you to spread yourselves, but I think... We're not doing too bad, Ali, are we, on 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock? So if you've not booked to come in yet on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, there is still space available. So, but really important that you let us know where you're coming to. Now, this Sunday evening, we're going to sing, if you want to, if you're up for a bit of a sing-song with me around the Tree of Hope, at 5 o'clock. Now, I'm doing a bit of a marathon. I'm at 4 o'clock at Lodsworth. Then I come to Esbon at 5 o'clock, and then I'm going on to 7 at 6. I want to meet and sing with all of you in one afternoon. So um, we, we don't need to be too long. I think we can get through it at a real cracking pace, depending on how cold and wet it is. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, when you turn up, if you're coming, there'll be a box with um, carol box in. Grab one, isolate from everybody, or make sure you're spread out. We'll sing a few carols back in the box, and we'll just isolate that box. So. But one thing I did wonder, um, Catherine spoke to us so beautifully last week about St. Joe's and their Christmas dinner, and I don't know whether you have made donations yet towards that, but obviously we need to gather that money in. So if you are wanting to make a contribution to help with that, maybe Sunday afternoon would be a good opportunity to gather that. So I'll, I'll certainly bring mine along. But it's important that obviously we do um, support Catherine and her work on Christmas Day with the homeless. So. Hands up who's coming for a sing on Sunday afternoon. Are you coming? Great. Good. I think we'll sound great, won't we? I think it'll be very exciting. You can't go to the big sing on Christmas Eve now. That's all sold out. Although it was free. They, they got rid of 1,200 tickets in a day. Just shows you, doesn't it, how eager people are to celebrate. I'm not sure. We're, we're all getting a bit twitchy about it now, it's quite a big gathering, but it's all safe, there's squares on the ground and there's a firework display at the end. You won't get that on Sunday, unless of course the Priory sparks or something. <laughs> so I think that's all I need to say to you at this stage, and also just to encourage you, you know, keep safe, keep working on all the things, keep looking after each other, keep caring for each other, particularly through this season, which for people on their own will be particularly difficult. So let's stand for our final question. Oh no! How can I forget Pam? Can I just, I forgot that. Sorry Pam, sorry um, Liz. Um, when I was talking about people saying yes, when we asked for donations towards the family support worker that we want to bring to this area to support families that are vulnerable, Pam and Liz have been knitting like crazy. And we, we, we sold huge amounts when we first did it back in Easter time, Lent, wasn't it, I think? And now they're back. So um, if you are able to support indirectly family support work by purchasing one of their toys, that would be great. But if you're going to do that, can you 
go over there and then go out through the top door rather than coming back right through to the church. Is that all right? So we'll just keep a flow. Into so if you want to see me, go out through that door. If you want to buy a toy, go out through that door. So I'll recognise how popular I am. And, oh yes, we have the, is the contactless working today? Great. So we have contactless payments in church as well. Good. Okay, now the blessing. So let's just bow our heads. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.